My name is Katie Steele. And I'm Brian Steele. We've been married for six years. It was the summer of 2016. We were in Lake Tahoe hiking. We loved to hike. And we were about three quarters of a mile into the hike when I started to feel really dizzy. I just remember leaning forward, putting my hand on a tree and saying out loud to my brother-in-law, I'm feeling dizzy. And then I was down. I woke up and I see people looking down at me. Brian's there now and he's helping me get to my feet. I'm disoriented. And then I see firemen coming up the trail and I'm thinking to myself, like, what, what just happened? And, oh, I must be pregnant. Well, she had a seizure <laughs> uh, and, and she was out for two minutes. But when we got to the emergency room, we got the, we got the worst news possible. They said, Katie, there's a 1% chance that, you know, you would have anything going on in your brain, but since you aren't pregnant, let's just take a scan of your brain. And the doctor came back with a very different countenance and he said, you're that 1%. And we just found out that I had a brain tumor. A walnut-sized tumor was wrapped around her pituitary gland and her, uh, and her optical nerve. It was like the whole world just turned upside down. The carpet is pulled out from underneath us. By God's grace, we got into the top neurosurgeon, arguably in the world, for the kind of tumor that I had. It was going to be a nine and a half hour long surgery. The last thing I remember before she got wheeled into the surgery center was taking her wedding ring and holding it. And so I had her wedding ring next to mine and just didn't know what was going to happen. Well, praise the Lord, I woke up. <laughs> the surgery was a total success. Yeah, they got the whole tumor, and we were now facing recovery time. I went from not being able to really move to walking, and then we thought, wow, why don't we start training for this run that we really enjoy doing called the Ragnar, which is a 200-mile race from the Peace Portal Arch to um, South Langley. We started to train. I went from being able to walk around that floor at the hospital to gaining strength to walk from my bed to downstairs to around the neighborhood and then eventually to running and then running miles. So it's, it's race day and we've got a great team and we start running and um, it was difficult and it was fun. And uh, we were done with our portion and one of our dear friends, he knows that I love eagles. Eagles remind me of Jesus' love for me personally. So the opportunity after this meeting this milestone and then to see eagles was such a gift. And so we had that opportunity. So we went down not knowing that we were walking into a neighbor to spirit. We were just randomly there and this guy who'd had the long running neighbor dispute just flipped his lid and started shooting a pellet gun into the crowd of us on the team. And all of a sudden I hear Katie screaming, ow, 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 and I just like, I lost it. I was like, you shot my wife and she had brain surgery and you shot her and it was terrible. We went to the emergency room. Uh, the doctor checked her out and it seemed like everything was okay. And yeah, you're gonna be sore for a little while. And we thought that was it, but months later, Katie's head still hurts and is not getting better. And so we just happened to have a schedule for a, a normal checkup following the brain surgery. And like 30 seconds into the, to the MRI, they stopped and said, something is wrong. They pulled me out so fast and it felt like a balloon was rubbing against my head and the static electricity. They pulled me out and Oh, what's, you've got an artifact, you've got metal in your head, what happened? And we had to go through another series of imaging to find that, wow, the pellet's still in my head. The only way to get it out was to surgically remove it, and then at the time when they were in my head, they would decide if they should take the plate out because the pellet was burrowed in one of four plates that was fusing my skull back together. This is the plate that we believe saved Katie's life. It's about the size of a nickel. And, uh, and the pellet hit right in the middle of it, dented the plate, and it saved her life. If it was over uh, a quarter of an inch more, it, it very easily could have hit this soft spot and gone into her brain. It could have been a very different situation. You know, something for myself that really impacted me was 
our community. We were so, we had meals, we had words of encouragement. So many people were praying for us and we did not feel alone. And that is, I think, a miracle how the Lord desires us to be one, right? As the Father and Son are one, yeah. so the world will know that Jesus was sent. And we got to experience that miracle of oneness in a way that mm. is very rare. And I ache for that. When we think about what was miraculous about the story, part of it was miraculous that she survived a brain tumor. And part of it was miraculous that she survived and that this teeny little plate ended up saving her life. It's not like, oh, she got a brain tumor, she got shot, now everything's better. Oh, is that Because everything isn't better. No. Uh, but he is good. But the Lord is good. I think that's, that's some of the miracle of the story, is yeah. that we find that he's good even though everything isn't better. It's good. Right.